This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we take a look at some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 8th of February, 2022, and I am AX. I am Serbia. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. Okay. The Daily Nation. Uhuru set to endorse Raila at party NDC. Mm -hmm. The Standard, Uhuru hits at Ruto, Jubilee backs Raila. Mm -hmm. The Star, Uhuru to DP, I am no pushover mm -hmm. as he defends term. Mm -hmm. And finally, the People Daily, stop your hypocrisy. Uhuru tells DP. So we see a running theme right yes, there, we but, but we'll get into the headline f uh, after. Serbe, you give us your submission. Yes. Uh, sure. The earthquake politics propagated by one William Ruto, Musalia Mudavadi, and Wentangula is what we call a zero-sum game in game theory. Mm -hmm. This is a situation whereby one person's gain is equivalent to another's loss, mm -hmm. so the okay. net benefit is zero. Okay. And this is why we say that the Kenya Kwisha Alliance exactly. is a walking oxymoron. Oh. <laughs> Ruto and his choir girls are yet to sit down and decide if they are going to campaign on the backdrop of the Jubilee administration failures or its successes. Yes. That is why Mudavadi will often be pandering falsehoods, claiming the government has done nothing, including building roads or healthcare centers, mm -hmm. and that UDA, ANC alliance will revive the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And yet, when it's Ruto's turn to speak, he will still stand on the same dais to say to Metenga, to Meunda, mm -hmm. to Limaliza Barabara, yes. taking credit for the same non-existent roads or healthcare centers. Yes. Indeed, whatever Ruto is adding, Modavadi is subtracting and neutralizing it. Uh -huh. And that exactly. is why we are saying the alliance is a zero-sum zero -sum game. game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ruto takes pride in the infrastructure development, democratic state, uh, space, international relations, peace and stability in the country as wins of the Jubilee administration, mm. while his newly acquired subsidiaries believe all that is hogwash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The three are not reading from the same script. Nope. Therefore, you just have to wonder, which value does this add politically? Mm -hmm. But perhaps this blatant contradiction is a strategy in itself. Mm. Mm. This is because it gives them the license to make absurd and outlandish propositions. Mm. And psychology as well as common sense tell us that human beings are prone to confirmation bias. Mm. That is, we tend to interpret evidence so that it conforms to what we already believe. This biased approach leads us to tolerate or even fail to notice the information is illogical, biased, mm. and inconsistent. Okay. Mm. And that is why Ruto and his subsidiaries are left to make contradicting statements and are lauded for telling it as it is. <laughs> and remember, if they are held accountable and they simply deny, the interpretation will be left up to you to decipher to decipher what they meant. Yeah. Mm. Not forgetting the consequences and broken promises too. Mm -hmm. This was the same scenario in 1992 with Fodasili. Every coconut head stood a chance to win as long as they were in Fodasili. Mm -hmm. It is as though the content of what they say did not matter. Mm -hmm. Only the fact that they were saying it from that particular party. Mm -hmm. And that is why Kamodo made the famous statement that even if a dog had died, had vied for a parliamentary seat in Muranga on a Fodasili ticket, okay. it would have won with a landslide. <laughs> Now, <laughs> the year is 2022, uh -huh. and it's six months to the elections, yes, it is. and history does repeat itself. Yes. Hustlers are happy tolerating this inconsistency in the UDA camp just because it's UDA. Mm -hmm. You might argue that perhaps this contradiction stems from the indecisiveness of UDA and ANC to coalesce around one narrative at their camp. Mm. Nevertheless, this points to a lack of clear direction in their part, and by extension, their plan for the greater republic. Yeah. Mm. However, at a time when most are sacrificing truth for political expediency, mm -hmm. the onus is on us to not give up on the truth, nope. common sense, and critical thinking yes. altogether. Excellent put. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hundred percent agree. He took us to church. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so you know, guys. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. President Kenyatta told us that we soon will hear from him. Mm -hmm. He told us that the season of politics is arriving mm. and we will soon see the extent of his arsenal. Mm. It is clear that the president is about to tell us why the DP and him have split. Mm. And today, 
I would like to hypothesize that the president has been putting the pieces in place to end Ruto's political life, mm. and it is gaining significant momentum. Sure. Okay. For the past five years, mm. the DP has been holding rallies and mm. diminishing his resources, as we were told, on the top of vehicles. Mm. Instead of supporting the president's efforts, mm. he has opted to politic and undermine his boss. Mm. But on the other hand, mm. President Kenyatta has been very quiet. Yeah, he, mm. has. he has chosen to bide his time, yes. and as he said, focus on work. Mm. While more than once reminding us that the road to power is, not a, is, is a marathon and it is not a sprint. Yes. But in the past week, the game plan is starting to take effect. Mm -hmm. Already three key steps have been taken in this regard. Step one, last week, President Kenyatta hosted a parliamentary group meeting with Jubilee party members, mm -hmm. where he made clear the next move for the party. Mm -hmm. Kanini Kega even gave us a, a brief indication of mm -hmm. the president's impending battle strategy mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. the DP. Yeah. This step ensures that the structures are put in place to reactivate Jubilee's presence on the ground. Mm -hmm. Let's move to step two. Okay. Shortly after the meeting, Jubilee announces that an NDC will be held on the 25th and the 26th of this month. Mm -hmm. That's the same day that ODM is planning to hold theirs. Yeah, it is. This move will finally remove the DP and his allies mm -hmm. from the party, as well as shore up the structures for a major Jubilee mm -hmm. ODM Azimio coalition. Mm -hmm. And then finally, step three. Just two days after Ruto held his own coast uh, tour, President Kamat Kenyatta comes to the mm. coast to clearly condemn the DP and his allies. Mm. This move justifies to the public the reason for the fallout mm. and prepares the ground for what is about to come. Mm. Now, Professor Mutai Gunyi has often said that President Kenyatta is the most talked about politician but the least studied. Mm. However, it is becoming evidently clear that the president is a master of timing mm -hmm. and it would seem that all roads are leading to the 25th of February. Oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So, today I would like to switch tracks a little bit and just ask a very simple question mm -hmm. of our judiciary. Mm -hmm. okay. What are you doing? That's a question they've been asked <laughs> a few too many times. Really. Especially now it's become increasingly pertinent because tomorrow, February 9th, mm -hmm. all civil servants seeking to vie for office must resign. Mm -hmm. This is according to Section 43, 5 and 6 of the Elections Act, IBC regulations and the directive from the head of the Public Service Commission. Mm -hmm. Now, as you can imagine, civil servants are not happy about this. Many of them would have preferred to campaign while still retaining access to state resources. Mm -hmm. A, I want to have my cake and eat to two situation. Mm. Others complained that it was not fair that they had to resign while the president and governors did not have to. Mm. And so they went to court in 2012. Mm. And in 2012, the resignation order was upheld by the high court. Mm. This is where the story should have ended. Mm -hmm. But in 2017, the same issue came before the same court who should have applied the earlier ruling. Mm -hmm. But instead, this high court contradicted itself and found the resignation order unconstitutional. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where the story should have ended a second time. But no, for the third time in 2021, the same issue <laughs> came before the same court. And again in 2022, the mm. same issue came before what? The, the same, same court. court. <laughs> this means that one question was brought before the court four times. Unbelievable. Do you see a problem here? Of mm -hmm. course. If law is supposed to be final and settled, mm -hmm. then why was the same court answering the same question over and over again? What is the problem here? Mm. Well, the judiciary has acted in direct contravention of the basic structure of law. Mm. In deciding on a matter that has been decided upon before, the court is abandoning the principle of res judicata. Mm -hmm. The principle of res judicata means that courts at the, of the same level cannot speak on an issue that has already been decided. This means that a high court cannot decide on an issue already decided by another high court. Mm -hmm. This principle is important because it ensures the finality of law mm -hmm. and the efficient use of limited judicial resources. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in light of this, it is therefore ironic that a court determined to import basic structure into our constitution mm -hmm. ignores the basic structure of law. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the irony of complaining about not having enough resources, only to waste vital resources on the same legal issue. Mm -hmm. Judiciary, please, I beg, make <laughs> it make sense. So. What does this mean for country? Mm. 
does this mean that the court can decide an issue one day mm. and decide on the same issue the next day, mm. rendering a different judgment? Mm. If so, does this mean that the same court could nullify election results one day and uphold them the next? Mm -hmm. So I asked the judiciary once more, what are you doing? And more importantly, who will bear the consequences of your choices? Mm. Very pertinent mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. So we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the headlines for mm -hmm. you. We ask ourselves these three questions. Is the headline topical or speculative? Mm -hmm. Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And yep. finally, is it thoughtful or, or just, just plain, plain lazy? lazy? So before we get into the headlines, let me reread them for you. Mm -hmm. The Daily Nation, Uhuru set to endorse Raila at party and DC. The Standard, Uhuru hits at Ruto Jubilee backs mm -hmm. Raila. Mm -hmm. The Star, Uhuru to DP. I am no pushover as a defense term. Mm -hmm. And the People Daily, stop mm -hmm. your hypocrisy, Uhuru tells DP. So all of them seem to be referencing yes. yesterday. Yes. And the situation yes. that happened there. Mm. Um, all of them seem to be topical. Uh, the one that's the two that stand out to me are more the standard and the people daily. Mm. But mm -hmm. what do people think of them? Um, allow me to go first. So mm -hmm. the reason why I prefer the people daily is because the president comes across as presidential. Mm. You compare that headline with the star that says, you know, to Uhuru to DP, I am no pushover, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. a defense term mm -hmm. literally puts him on the back foot, puts mm -hmm. him on the defensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whereas people daily is very assertive, very stop your yeah. hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. That's why for me, People Daily is a good headline. So I also like the, the People's Daily. I'm mm -hmm. glad that Uhuru is uh, finally putting his foot down. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will not trash any of the headlines, yes. but we will have the winning headline which comes from the People Daily. So, on to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, mm -hmm. where we also have a three-part criteria mm -hmm. that we use to judge them for you. We ask ourselves, is the cartoon humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? Mm -hmm. And finally, is it effective or just plain lazy? So, right. uh, AX, why don't you take us through the Daily Nation? All right, so you will see the cartoon on your screens mm -hmm. right now. And on it, you will see a caricature of Chebukati dressed uh, as the election. Very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very big lady with, very, a, very with the ballot box as what the a stomach. Lady. I don't know. I do. You tell us. <laughs> now, looking on at this approval mm -hmm. is Ruto, Raila, Colonzo, and Morkamen. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, for me and my house, mm -hmm. this cartoon does not make sense, mm -hmm. right? If the mm -hmm. ballot box is open and the ballot box is always supposed to be closed in order to preserve the secrecy mm -hmm. of the vote, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want an amendment to try to remedy that very critical issue? Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it seems to me that this particular cartoon has misunderstood mm -hmm. the Elections Amendment Act. Mm -hmm. All you would need to do is go read the IBC press release which is mm. on their website yep. to better understand what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And the truth of that act and the truth of those amendments mm -hmm. is that they are designed to remedy mm. some of the issues the Supreme Court identified in the 2017, 2017. petition. Yep. They mm. are doing what you have asked of your government for so long, mm. fix the holes, plug the holes, mm -hmm. fix the system. And when they try to do it, you come across being like, no, 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 no. We don't want that. No, 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 no. Please make Grasping up your mind. Grasping straws to politicize yes. everything. Let's Please go make up your mind. to the standard mm -hmm. where we have a cartoon which depicts a door with mm. one, two, three, four, eight, endless. One, two, but let's three, say four, eight locks. Five, six, mm. Eight locks. Seven, maybe uh, nine. Mm -hmm. Six of them are analog mm -hmm. and two of them are digital, mm -hmm. I think, from what I can see. Uh, then t this is the door to the IBC election mm -hmm. data servers. Then you have uh, Wanjiko mm -hmm. coming and standing at the door, looking at it very confused mm -hmm. and then you have a uh, very calm Chebukati uh, who by comparison he, he, he's collected and he says that they have lost the keys but they will find them soon mm -hmm. so I didn't really get the context of the cartoon but it, it seems to reference that you know in 2017 we had the Supreme Court ordered IBC yeah. to open the servers yes. in which uh, <laughs> the streaming the elections um, yeah, and technology experts who had been appointed by the court to compile a report on the authenticity of President Kenyatta's victory, but follow it, there was all that issue around the failures mm -hmm. of it and the nullification. It didn't really make much sense to me, but uh, mm -hmm. we move. We move nevertheless. The star, Serbia. Mm. All right. Um, mm -hmm. We have the caricatures of Mudavadi, Kalonzo, Ruto, and Raila with Uhuru, mm -hmm. all trying to drive the succession car. Mm -hmm. They've seemed to make uh, uh, Raila the baby sitting yeah. on, on, Raila yeah. on <laughs> Uhuru's lap. <laughs> <laughs> with Kalonzo State at the back project seat. as they are claiming, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. However, Ruto and Modavadi are trying to drive the car from outside. Well, mm -hmm. in succession politics, I think they'll be impacted by the coming jubilee NDC. Mm -hmm. 
and everyone hoping to defect will basically be thrown into panic. I don't even some people will be able to defect and mm -hmm. go to Uda. And uh, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. Jubilee Party is not dead, and mm -hmm. this time it will be bigger than ever before. Mm -hmm. So all those defectors, I should remind them that there is no government in opposition, because mm -hmm. clearly that is where they are headed to if they resign from the party. Yes. You know, the only thing I have wrong with the cartoon is is, is the, the Raila Uhuru partnership being being showcased That's that way. That's a decent relationship. Yeah, because <laughs> apart from it, this is sort of... It's uh, disrespectful. Ruto from outside the wheel trying to grab the wheel on his end That's and Mudavadi dangerous. on the side. It's, it's, it's an interesting cartoon. But, but uh, I, I, I also would like to add, like, <laughs> without meaning to, this mm -hmm. cartoonist has kind of demonstrated why BBI was so important. Mm. Because the reason why everyone's kind of grab on the, onto the wheel of the car is because there's, there's not a lot one, of... There's only there's one, one wheel. One, mm -hmm. There's only two seats. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. had, Ferrari, had, yeah, exactly. Of, yeah. Had BBI yeah. passed, we'd have had a Matatu presidency yeah. as opposed to Rather than Ferrari, Ferrari presidency. presidency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and as usual, we will ignore the, the people, people daily. daily. So, <laughs> on a day when we had a winning headline from the People Daily, and mm -hmm. I think we agreed that there's no winning cartoon, mm -hmm. I'll leave you with this quote by Sun Tzu himself. If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak so that he may grow arrogant. If he is taking his ease, give him no rest. If his forces are united, separate them. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that like button. We're also on your TV screens. Find us on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.